Hey, what's up everybody? Nexel here. Today we are playing Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, and I'm going to be talking about the two new banners that dropped today in Global for Supernova++ Plus Plus Illustrated Sora and Supernova++ Plus Plus Xemnas. Now, the first thing I want to say is that if you are passing the content just fine right now by overpowering the enemy, then likely this is going to be a very, very easy skip for you. The two events that are out right now, specifically the Leviathan Proud Mode event and the Big Bonus Challenge, test to see if you have certain medals in your inventory in order to pass them. The Leviathan event tests to see if you have good reverse metals that aren't magic, and it's the same with the Gummy Golem at the end of the Big Bonus Challenge. Those test to see what reverse metals you have. The Big Bonus Challenge is really seeing if you have good upright magic metals. So odds are if you're passing those two quests by overpowering the enemy and not using tricks like defense, not using recovery buffing, things like that, if you're passing those just fine by overpowering them, then likely this is going to be a very easy skip for you. However, if you're new, or you just want some more insight, or you've got a few holes in your Keyblade setup that could really use these two metals, stay tuned, because we are going to be talking about our banner analysis, we'll talk about the metal, the draw odds, and finally my thoughts and recommendations on whether or not I think you should be pulling from either of these banners. So let's go ahead and start by talking about Supernova++ Plus Plus Illustrated Sora. The first thing that I wanted to note was that it's not a key art medal, it's an illustrated medal. Now those are very, very different because usually when they release an illustrated medal, they release it as a group. There is usually more than just one. So if we go to my metal inventory right now, so we got illustrated Sora. Shortly after, or I think it might have even been at the same time, we got illustrated Riku. Both of these medals were followed up by an illustrated Kyrie that completely destroyed the format back in the day. So the fact that they named this banner Illustrated Sora and not Key Art whatever means that we might be getting an Illustrated Kyrie sometime soon, and that's usually going to be a game-breaking medal. It might be the medal that everyone is saying is going to destroy the format right now. So just keep that in mind that Illustrated Kyrie might be making a return as a Supernova++ Plus Plus medal. So let's go ahead and talk about the banner itself. So first things first, you have until June 1st to decide if you want to pull for this. That's a lot of time to think about it, it's a lot of time to save jewels, and more content might be released during that time that might be more valuable than Illustrated Sora. So make sure you don't rush it, always feel free to wait and pull. Usually there's no reason to pull right away unless an event is ending and you know that that metal is going to help you, but odds are it's always better to wait until the last day to pull. The rest of this banner is going to be very standard stuff that we've seen in plenty of banners back in the day. So with every single pull, you are going to be spending 3,000 jewels. You get 3 Kingdom Hearts 3 medals, 6 5 star or higher medals, 10 VIP coins, a trait medal for the banner medal, so in this case it's going to be Illustrated Sora, and then you're also going to be getting 3 magic gems with every single pull. You are guaranteed the Illustrated Sora within 5 draws. So. Remember the rule of thumb is that if you cannot pull those five times, if you can't mercy the metal, you do not pull. You don't just do random one or two pulls here and there. It's always in your best interest to save up until you can mercy a metal. So mercy and five pulls, again, this is all standard stuff, nothing crazy, nothing new. So let's go ahead and move on to the metal itself. First of all, starting with the fact that I always love Kingdom Hearts concept art, so I'm a big fan of the artwork right away. But let's talk about the part that people actually care about, the actual metal and its effect. So looking at Supernova++ Plus Plus Illustrated Sora, he is an upright magic metal that is going to have a maximum strength of roughly about 47,000. Pretty standard stuff, this is where we're moving towards in terms of our average maximum strength. He's going to hit all targets and deals 8 hits, but that becomes irrelevant. Uh, for 2 turns, he's going to increase your magic metal strength by plus 3000. This is 500 more magic metal strength in comparison to the Elsa, which we're going to be comparing Illustrated Sora a lot to today. So 500 more magic metal strength every single turn. Remember that it is a 2 turn buffer, so on the first turn, one cast is going to give you plus 3000. On the second turn, because it carries over, it's going to give you plus 6000, so it does stack. And with copy metals, uh, with recovery buffing, this can scale very, very, very quickly. So it's always awesome to see two-turn buffers. In terms of the multiplier buffs that he gives you, he will give you general strength and magic strength 
times 15. Now, he is missing upright, and it's going to be the same for his defense. So, for the debuff, it's going to give the enemies minus 15 general defense and minus 15 magic defense. Again, missing the upright buff. So, what that means is that if you want to get the most out of this metal in terms of damage, you have to buff him first with something like Kingdom Hearts 3 Nominee, with something like Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie A with extra attack. Even the Renova Shion is going to be enough to buff this, uh, this guy's upright upright uh, strength and decrease the enemy's upright defense so he is not perfectly self buffing he will also give you special attack bonus plus 200 percent which we don't really care about because we rely on supernovas to give us plus 300 percent it's going to give you count plus one which is okay it helps you fix the numbers on red counter enemies but likely on blue counter enemies it's not going to be doing much and then it does have a damage plus condition of one enemy or zero parts left that means the fewer number of enemies that are there, the higher the multiplier of this metal is going to be. This is very important because the multiplier for this metal is not very good. So at the low end, it's times 18. At the high end, it's roughly about times 20. We have a lot of metals that crack this. So for example, a lot of the reverse metals nowadays can crack up to like times 22 multiplier. Final Fantasy VII Remake Sephiroth is I think like 21, 22, somewhere in that range there. Uh, the Dark Riku that's out right now, 50% of the time is going to be doing times 25. I'm pretty sure the Gambler is also like times 24, something like that. But what I'm trying to say here is that the multiplier for Illustrated Sora is not very high. And on top of that, there's a condition in order to get to that maximum 20 multiplier. So already we're not looking at a good review for Supernova Plus Plus Illustrated Sora. The last thing he does with every special attack activation is Pierce's defense boost 30%. Again, only relevant really for PvP being able to crack through that defense boost. In terms of his gauge cost, it's 6 gauges. Now that is very, very hefty and could actually impair this metal's usefulness. Because remember that even if you have a gauge reducing skill, like for example attack boost 12 max SP gauge 1, you still have to have the initial 6 gauges in order to activate the metal. So having a high gauge cost really makes it more difficult to plan around using this metal. In terms of the supernova attack, is going to hit all enemies, and again, it's another two-turn buffer, giving you magic metal strength plus 6,000 for two turns. In terms of the buffs that the Supernova offers, it gives you plus 15 upright buff and then plus 15 magic strength buff. For the target, it gives minus 15 upright defense debuff and then minus 15 magic defense debuff. Now, in this case, we're missing the general strength and the general defense debuff. So we're missing a lot in terms of this metal being a perfect buffer whenever or when we compare it to something like Dark Riku that has perfect buffs for himself every single time he's activated and the supernova attack also gives him perfect buffs. So I was kind of expecting something like that for this illustrated Sora, but unfortunately it's just not crossing there. Of course, as a supernova metal, he will give you special attack bonus plus 300%, and then the supernova attack ignores target's defense boost. Now, talking about this metal in terms of how good it is at PvP, it's okay. It's pretty standard stuff. Pierce's defense boost 30% is what we've always seen. We've never seen Pierce's defense boost 50%, so that's standard. Ignoring target's defense boost for the supernova attack doesn't really matter that much, because with magic metals, the big problem with them in PvP is that we have 100% magic reflection off of things like Anti-Aqua or Kingdom Hearts 3 Elsa. So because magic reflection 100% exists, these metals become less valuable. Because if you make a mistake, if you don't change your setups, or if you accidentally crash into an enemy that has magic reflection up, you will eat 100% of that damage back unless you're doing some trickety trick stuff. So magic metals and pvp just don't mix well so the fact that it ignores targets defense boost the fact that it pierces defense boost 30 percent is okay if you're good at pvp and you know how to do your setups like by making sure you're always attacking when you're using magic metals it's okay to that regard but magic metals always tend to not be as good in pvp as power or speed metals so all in all the metal is very mediocre in terms of how I feel about it. We'll go ahead and uh, talk about the draw odds before we talk about our final recommendations. 
So talking about the draw odds, the only big thing I want you to really notice is that you cannot get Supernova++ plus plus Xemnas in this. So even though the two banners were released at the same time, you can't get the Xemnas from the Sora banner and you can't get the Sora from the Xemnas banner. Just one thing to note for the draw odds. So in terms of my thoughts and recommendations, if you have Elsa and she's got great traits and everything, odds are you don't need this medal. It's not so much better than Elsa that you'll need this over the Elsa. Not just that, but the Elsa actually has more utility, being able to give you 100% magic reflection with every cast, and then turns the next metal into magic. Those are two huge pieces of utility that are missing from Illustrated Sora that exist on Elsa, making Elsa, in my opinion, even though her numbers are lower, her maximum strength is not as high, her multiplier is not as high, her boosts are not as high, even though those numbers are lower, the utility that comes with Elsa, in my opinion, is far greater than what we've got in this Sora. So if you don't have Elsa, this medal might be worth it, but really there's nothing particularly special about him. He's missing buffs, so he's not a perfect buffer. His multiplier is not so great. He's a magic medal that has a lot of PvP utility when magic medals are really, really bad for PvP. So it's... It's not really a great medal in my opinion, however, if you are going to pull, make sure you're always paying attention to the gauge cost, because that 6 gauge cost can become very problematic when you're making certain setups. So, in my opinion, for Illustrated Sora, he's a skip or way down on it. There's no need to rush this. You have until, again, June 1st to decide, and Illustrated Sora is not so much greater than what's currently out right now that he's got to be an absolute pull. Now, speaking about the better metal, we are going to be talking about Supernova++ Kingdom Hearts 3 Xemnas next. So it looks like they reused the model from Kingdom Hearts 2 rather than deciding to use a Kingdom Hearts 3 model. But again, they can do whatever they want. We just care about the metal and what it does. Alright, so let's talk about the banner itself. Again, it's pretty much the exact same banner as the Illustrated Sora, except you are going to be getting uh, Xemnas traits instead of Sora traits and you're getting three power gems as opposed to the three magic gems that you got with the Sora. So the banners are more or less the same, five mercy pull, 10 VIP coins, all of it's the same. So let's go ahead and talk about the metal. So this is the Xemnas metal, and he is going to be a reverse power metal with a maximum strength of almost 47,000. Again, getting really, really close to that 47,000 average that we've been seeing a lot. He hits all enemies and ignores target's attributes. Now, this is a pretty powerful effect based on how you use it. Remember that ignoring target's attributes means that whenever you cast this metal special attack, it will always do super effective damage. We did a damage test back in the day. Super effective damage does twice as much damage as matching attribute. So for example, if you are a speed metal hitting a speed enemy, that's times one. If you are a power metal hitting a speed enemy, that's times two. And ignoring target's attributes gives you that superiority every single time. So doing times two the amount of damage is nothing to ignore here. So for the rest of the metal, he deals 13 hits, which is actually a bad thing. Now, the reason this is a bad thing, because whenever people see ignores targets attributes, they instantly think this is going to make a great raid metal because I could use it against any raid enemy. However, doing 13 hits is actually really, really bad for raids. So remember that with raids, you get a bigger Lux boost, the fewer number of hits the metal does. So doing 13 hits makes that bonus a lot less. Not just that, but doing 13 hits is a very, very long animation, which can make it a longer raid, and that means you're not as efficient. So the current best raid medals right now are, I believe it's Key Art 21, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Yensid, and Timeless River Mickey, because they ignore attributes, but they also do a very low number of hits. So the 13 hits makes it kind of detrimental to raids, but nevertheless, he does ignore the target's attributes. For one turn, he's going to give you Metal Strength plus 6,000, and we'll talk about this more in a little bit. And then in terms of buffing, he will pretty much give you perfect buffs except for Upright. So he will give you General Strength, Reverse Strength, even Power Speed Magic Strength, which is actually pretty decent. He'll give you Special Attack Bonus plus 200%. Again, we don't really care about that because our Supernovas give us plus 300%. And Count plus minus zero. Remember that a lot of the most recent Reverse Metals give you Count plus minus zero, which is good because the old Reverse Metals don't do that. They don't ignore Count, and that makes some of the quests a lot harder. One thing to note is that there are no debuffs. So even though 
you can cast this metal like let's say every single turn you have to make sure the enemy has debuffs you have to prep this metal with something like kingdom hearts 3 nominee or kingdom hearts uh, or i'm sorry like hd Xion, something that is able to get the enemy's defense stats down so that this metal is doing the most amount of damage he has a three gauge cost and about a flat multiplier of times 20 under all conditions which is okay it's it's again not the greatest we have things cracking 21 22 multiplier so not exactly the greatest multiplier but he ignores attributes and again times two damage every single time is nothing to laugh about so in terms of his supernova attack he will give you metal strength plus a thousand and then for the targets he's gonna give pretty much perfect debuffing except for upright again you can't rely on this because supernovas you only get one activation per quest so it's good that the special attack and the supernova attack give you pretty much perfect buffs for everything that's not upright but supernova attacks you can't rely on them to be a consistent source of debuffing uh, special attack bonus plus 300 percent again standard stuff for supernovas and at this point really what i want to do is talk about the buffs so first of all metal strength plus 6000 and metal strength plus 10,000 those are generic metal strengths meaning that no matter what comes after Xemnas he is going to be giving that metal strength it doesn't matter if it's speed it doesn't matter if it's upright it doesn't matter if it's magic the Xemnas whenever you cast it or use his supernova will give those metal strength making him decent as a generic buffer in order to buff all the metals in the keyblade setup rather than just power ones rather than just reverse ones so that gives him more versatility and more utility in terms of how you're able to use him he's a really solid metal and really that metal strength plus 6000 and plus 10000 is nothing to laugh at so i made a chart because it's a lot easier for me to visualize it this way but when we use something like recovery buffing so remember with recovery buffing you get the enemy's counters down they knock you out and you maintain all of the metal strength buff from the previous turn rather than it being wiped away when you do all the math it can get out of hand very 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 fast because plus 6000 metal strength is a lot i think it is the second highest that we've got it might actually be the highest plus 6000 metal strength with every single cast so alone with recovery buffing, on the third turn, you are looking at plus 28,000 metal strength just from this one metal alone. If you throw in a copy metal, you can go as, or if you, I'm sorry, if it becomes extra attack, if you have this metal with extra attack, you can reach up to 46,000 strength metal strength with this metal alone. So just take a look at this because once you get to uh, having one copy metal with extra attack, having this metal with extra attack, and having one supernova renew metal, with those three metals alone, you get up to 70,000 metal strength, not power metal strength, not reverse metal strength, straight up 70,000 generic metal strength. And that's a lot for just three metals. So really, the reason I think that the Xemnas is really cool is because he can scale really, really well with recovery buffing. Um, remember what I said about raids though he is not exactly the strongest raid metal just because even though he ignores attributes 13 hits is a long animation and it spreads out the damage preventing you from having a higher bonus locks at the end of it all uh, nothing to talk about in terms of his draw odds again you can't get the Sora and the Xemnas banner and vice versa but in terms of my thoughts and recommendations, if you don't have any good reverse metals, this is actually a really decent pickup. Being able to ignore all attributes is really, really good. And if you don't have a lot of reverse metals in general, this one reverse metal can sometimes compensate for you missing a reverse speed metal, for you missing a reverse magic metal, because he will always be doing super effective damage no matter what. So if you're lacking in the reverse department, this might actually be a very great metal for you because because he can cover a lot of different bases if the objective is you just can't use upright metals and let's just say you're fighting against a speed enemy it doesn't matter because Xemnas is a reverse metal that will ignore the fact that it's a speed enemy or that it's a ma I'm sorry I meant to say magic enemy my mistake um, it'll ignore whatever the attribute of the enemy is and just do super effective damage anyways so if you don't have a lot of good reverse metals I can actually recommend this metal to you it's actually a really decent metal to just carry you throughout those quests where you can't use upright ones this metal again because of its high ability to stack strength like that can become very crucial for passing pve stuff because 
Let's take a look at the chart again. I'm telling you, these are crazy numbers to be reaching with just one metal special attack cast multiple times. So this could be a defining point for, for PvE content because uh, it just means you can hit those higher numbers. And again, higher numbers meaning, meaning you're passing multiple rounds. So it could be very, very good in terms of passing PvE content like Colosseum. But realistically, I only recommend it to people who need reverse medals. Again, try your hand at the Proud Mode event versus the Leviathan. If you can pass it, this medal might be for you. If you can pass it, odds are that means you've got a workaround in terms of reverse medals. So if you're lacking on the reverse medal department, this might be the right guy for you. But remember, you utility will always last much longer than strength. So the big thing about Xemnas, cracks high numbers. In terms of utility, nothing really special. Only gives you a, an okay buff that's very easy to get around with Kingdom Hearts 3 Nominee, but doesn't give you much else aside from that. And raw numbers will always be worse than utility, and Xemnas just doesn't come with a lot of utility. So in terms of both of these medals, I personally think they're skips, but if you're missing the Elsa, maybe the Illustrated Sora's for you. If you're missing a lot of reverse medals, the Xemnas might be for you. But remember, we have no idea really what's coming out, and that illustrated Sora thing is making me very, 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 very cautious that there is an illustrated Kyrie that's coming out soon that might be the completely game-breaking metal that everyone's been expecting to replace Kingdom Hearts 3 Nominee. So those are my thoughts on the banners. Hopefully it was helpful, gave you some insight on how to use them or really creative things you can do with them. Um, with, with that being said, that's the end of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer when I have the time. If you'd like to get my help or ask for the help of the Twilight Nights off hours or without the videos, the Discord link is right down there. Feel free to join. That is a permanent link there. With that being said, that's the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, until next time, Take it easy.